All right, good morning. We're at the University of Chicago campus. We're gonna go on ahead and get started with this two mile. Even though I'm gonna do four, you're gonna do two, right? So we're gonna go on ahead and get started with that. Let's go. Let me just set my watch real quick. Let's go. And here we go. Hope you all had a good night, morning, whatever. I am rocking the Hocus. Yeah, go get you a pair. Go get you a pair. Yes, these are comfortable shoes. Let me stop. Bow, footwear. I'll show you later. So let me cross this street. Can I get tribute hit? Will they slow down? Okay. On the University of Chicago campus, acting like pedestrians matter. University of Chicago campus, rather historic campus. You got Chicago Fire Department over here. The brave men and women who serve to put out fires and save lives, all that great stuff. Ooh. There's a lot of things to see here in Hyde Park. Anytime I kind of see a person, I kind of want to peel off a little bit. I'm not putting them in the bridge yet. Let's go. Of course, I got to rock the brand. A woman's place is behind the trigger. Now, regardless of your political affiliation, Hyde Park is a rather hmm, liberal neighborhood, which means you're going to get not too many people who like firearms. They'll be okay. <laughs> They'll be okay. Okay. I'm going to the little city block. Okay, so look, there's a lot of people around. I'm not going to block them. They're here, you see them. And the one thing I would like to encourage you to do is to be in places and walk in places where you see other people working out. Like that stuff is motivating. Young, old, you would not know if they're rich or poor, but let's assume rich, poor middle class, upper class, whatever. There are things that bond us as humans together. And working out can definitely be one of those things. Now, if I see somebody knowingly coming this way, I'm gonna kind of shift over. Good morning. Yeah, this is a beautiful park over here. Beautiful, beautiful park. Now, I'd love to be able to walk through that park, but I am carrying and pursuant to 430 ILCS 66, section 75, I am not allowed to carry in that park. So, I don't risk it. It's definitely that neighborhood where you will get arrested. Now, uh, well, context, context. I don't want to assume things. But uh, another reason why um, I like this campus, but I don't always come around in this campus, two things. One, besides the beautiful houses, which you'll see along the walkway, because we are in the Hyde Park slash Kenwood neighborhood, and you're seeing some remnants of the there was a tornado and bad weather yesterday. I don't know if any tornadoes touched down in Chicago. I don't want to say it's a rarity, but it doesn't happen often. I know in other places in Illinois, the tornadoes definitely touched down. Shoot. But you got Chicago police patrolling. I believe this is the second district. But you also have the University of Chicago police that patrol in this area 
And when I say they're active, they're active. You'll probably see them along the route, maybe. Um, but another reason why I don't frequent this campus is because this is a liberal area that is more anti-gun than they are pro-gun, you'll find out, or not find out, but you'll easily become a target of a robbery. Why would you easily become a target of a robbery? Because persons who seek to engage in criminal behavior, so-called criminals, know that there's higher of a likelihood that the people walking around here are not carrying guns versus those who are. Let me put this down so I want to get them in the picture. Good morning. Good morning. Look, we can't block it. So your face is in it, your face is in it. You just, you don't have an expectation of privacy. You're in the public, so. Um, and I'm not gonna show y'all the ground just to keep avoiding showing people in the picture. I'll make a conscious effort, but if you in it, you in it. So the likelihood of a person carrying a firearm in this area, more likely than not, they're not. They don't like them. They may or may not believe in them. So to persons who seek to engage in criminal behavior, so-called criminals, this area is easy pickings. Hate to say it, it's true. Easy pickings. Shouldn't be. Doesn't have to be. But hey, you lay your bed, make your bed, it is what it is. Um, and you have the right, by the way, to decide not to carry a firearm. You have that right. But, you know, you also have a duty to protect yourself and if you choose not to, then that's fine. Your choices come with natural and logical consequences. It is simply what it is. <laughs> um, hope you all are having a great day. So let me give you some more pointers regarding the weight loss stuff, okay? Um, have patience with yourself in the process. I'm gonna keep on saying that over and over again. See these wonderful people in front of me, they're walking. Please do not doubt the benefits of race walking, speed walking, power walking. And I think she's wearing Hoka's, no, she's wearing her armors. I love it. Please don't uh, doubt the benefits of race walking. One of the things that I see people do when they get on the treadmill or they decide they want to lose weight because they're sick of Oh no, those are here. Yeah, see? Yeah, that's what he was saying. Great shoes. I'm on your right. On, oh. Sorry, on your left. I didn't mean to start you. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. All right. All right. Uh, don't doubt the benefits of race walking. But one of the things that I see when I'm on my journey um, trying to lose weight is, you know, people get sick and tired of their weight and they want to make a change and all that great stuff that stuff is great it really really is but one of the things that i see people do is it's a false start and what i mean by false start is you'll go on ahead and get in the gym you'll get on the treadmill and when you get in the gym good morning okay good morning. when you get in the gym and you get on the treadmill and you're top heavy. You get in the gym, you get on the treadmill, and you're top heavy. So this is just physics. Not shaming, not judging. This is just straight physics. You get in the gym, you're top heavy, and then you're bouncing up and down on the treadmill, on the elliptical. And what are you doing when you're doing those things? You're hurting, you're harming. You might as well say destroying your joints. And that's why when I encourage people, because this isn't my first time losing weight, but this is my first time 
losing weight after educating myself under the influence and teachings of other people about the science of it, which helps me develop patience, cultivate patience, and do it the right way. See, every other time I've lost weight, it's been faster than this time, but I haven't lost then so much as I've done now. So I can encourage people better and help people better because the way that I was taught to help people lose weight was missing some key elements, you know? You're top heavy. And so when you're top heavy and you decide you wanna lose weight and you want that right now, right now, right now, and let's talk facts, our society cultivates that culture of now, 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 don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, now, 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 do it, do it, do it, do it. You know, you can lose weight in 30 days. You can do it in 60 days. You can do it in 90 days. Look, I'm gonna say it before, because I've said it before, and I'm gonna say it again. Anything you do fast, will it last? Anything you do fast, will it last? Anything you do fast, will it last? Let me say it again. Anything you do fast, will it last? What's the likelihood of this thing that you've done so fast lasting? What's the likelihood of you losing that weight and keeping it off if you've done it so fast? red light, but we got no traffic on either side, so do not niggas stop. Around and had niggas do not shit wait. That's the way of dealing with having niggas thinking niggas are scared of niggas. But niggas like me ain't scared of niggas like niggas, period. Because I know niggas. We just gonna leave it there. The things you see on your route. Um, when you're top heavy and you get on the treadmill and you decide that you want to run or you decide that you want to get on the elliptical to get a good sweat, you just don't know. You are destroying your knees. It may not be in that workout. You may walk away feeling good, but you're gonna pay for it. When your body settles, when the pain settles in, you're gonna feel it. And it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be pretty. What did I tell you all my fat burning heart rate was? Didn't I tell you all that my fat burning heart rate is 120 beats per minute? Well, look at where I'm at. I'm trying to hold it still, 128, right? 128, and we're only 12 minutes into it, okay? So let's go. Um, I just like to encourage you, when you are starting out on your weight loss journey, Please be mindful of physics. Please be mindful of your size. Anyone who tries to tell you that size doesn't matter when it comes down to choosing whether to run or whether to walk is misguiding you. They're miseducating you. They are not giving you the science of physics, okay? Yes, you have desired to make the change. Yes, you have uh, gotten the, the, the spark to do the work. And you go into the gym and you get on the treadmill and you see other people running. Now you may or may not have done the education to educate yourself about how to do it the right way, the long way, you may not have educated yourself regarding that, right? So you see other people running and they're sweating. And what do we do without the education? We think, let's go on ahead and do that same thing. Let's go on ahead and do that same thing. Yeah, okay, you can do that. But what's gonna be the problem? You're not thinking about your knees. So since your knees can't speak in the way that you learn, let me speak for your knees. Walk. Let me speak for your knees. Walk. Let me speak for your knees. Walk. Why? Ladies, behind you, I'm on your left. Thank you, thank you. Good morning. 
Let me speak for your knees. Right? Walk. What is the reason that I am encouraging you to walk? If you research your fat burning heart rate. Look at this. Boy, I love my hocus. Usually I'm at a 15 mile pace. Man, one mile under 15. Come on now, let's go. So when you're, good morning. Good morning. When you are at a fat burning heart rate that you maintain, guess what you're gonna end up doing? You're gonna end up sweating, right? And you're not putting a lot of pressure and tension on your knees. See, you don't wanna have to get a knee replacement. You don't wanna have to get a hip replacement. You don't wanna have to get a replacement of the things that you've overused and abused in your journey to try to lose weight. You don't wanna harm those things. You don't wanna do that. Okay, so I'm really, 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 really encouraging you to get the education and when you get the education and you are taught the process of things, it could assist. And those things, I mean, how to lose weight the right way, the long way, where it's maintainable and sustainable. You gain the patience that you need to gain to learn how to be patient, when to be patient, the reasons to be patient in doing these things, right? Where to be patient at. Be patient at this step, maybe not at this step. This step requires patience. This step, uh, not so much, you can do this now. You know, the who, what, where, when, why, or the reasons, and how definitely matters. And understanding these things in the space of weight loss and exercise will help you develop the patience, the knowledge, skill, ability, confidence, and confidence of how to diet the right way, how to exercise so that you can be patient with yourself because you understand the process. Look at that beautiful pool. So I love walking in neighborhoods that have signs of life. People out here playing. It's been a minute since I walked in Hyde Park. I walk in other places and you'll see, you know, and I'm picking various places, right? Places I go, places I don't go. So it's gonna be like a coin toss type thing. You know, you see signs of other people working out. I love it. And you need to see that. Your brain needs that. Your brain needs that. We as humans are the collections of five things. Needs, education, experiences, habits, and motivations. But when you're born, that order is different. And you heard me say it before. Needs, experiences, motivations, habits. Good morning. And then education, right? So depending upon how late you got this education, right? You needed to start in reverse. Get the education. Mm -hmm. Because your needs, right? Your brain needs these. Good morning. Your brain needs these experiences, right? New experiences. Experiences are the easiest things to get, right? But you can often end up getting experience without the education. And when you get the experience without the education, it's hard to compartmentalize and place that experience in a logical way. So you need the education too. But the experiences are the easiest things to get because all you have to do in order to get these experiences is have your senses, your human senses working. When your human senses work, it gives you the ability to experience things mainly through what you see, touch, feel, sense. You shouldn't be tasting anything along this route except water. Let me get some water. Sips. Get you a Camelback hydration system or whatever you want to get. I choose to get the Camelback 
because I could put stuff in it and not have to have my keys jingling in my pockets, things like that. When you're working out outside, you gotta factor in the elements, stuff like that. Things you may need along your journey. I'm very proud of you deciding to make the change. I'm very proud of you deciding to want to be healthy. Very proud of you, you know. But usually what I see is people deciding to want to make the change and then they get fast, false starts. Fast, false starts, kind of like the new year, new me thing right at the beginning of the year. Everybody joins the gym. Everybody gets a gym membership and they get out there and they try, but it's not maintainable, it's not sustainable. Why? They don't do workouts that make sense for their body type. If you're heavy up top, or even just heavy all over, you, more than anybody I would argue, you're gonna have to cultivate the patience because your journey is gonna be longer than others. And that's okay. That is okay, good morning. That is okay. It's okay. Your journey is gonna be longer than others. I want you to remember this. Your pace, your race. Your pace, your race. Whose time clock are you on? I encourage you not to be on anybody else's time clock, but your own. Not to be on anybody else's time clock, but your own. Be on your own time clock. What does that mean? I'm not trying to lose weight in 30 days. I'm not trying to lose weight in 60 days. I'm not trying to lose weight in 90 days. What did we talk about in episode two? If you've been watching, cultivating H-A-B-I-T-S. H-A-B-I-T-S. Habits. Let's just start there. Let's just not make the goal weight loss. Now, as you're cultivating the habitual lifestyle, because this is Adlerian, Alfred Adler, lifestyle changes, right? As you're cultivating the habits and finding your, your spots of time where you can dedicate to coming back tomorrow and doing this every day, weight loss comes as a byproduct of you first working on habits. What did I say we're the collection of? Needs, education, experiences, habits, and motivations. But when you're born, the order is different. Needs, experiences, motivations, habits, and education. So when you're getting the education like what you're getting now, now what are we working on? Habits. Whatever it is that you need to do for yourself, eating, you definitely need to eat, right? Working out, you need to do that, but which one comes more important than the other? Eating. And I like working out outside because huh, when the gym is closed, outside is open. Outside is the awesome gym. Rain, sleet, or snow. These feet are gonna go. Rain, sleet, or snow. These feet are gonna go. Right? Clear left. Waiting for the right to clear. Here we go, after this. Yeah, I'm a habitual light, <laughs> light violator. If I see there's a clearing, I'm gonna go on ahead and go, depending upon the size of the intersection, okay? But, news, education, experiences, habits, and motivations, but when you're born, it's the order's different. Needs, experiences, motivations, habits, and then education. When you get the education, we gotta start working on our habits. We gotta start working on our habits, right? So don't make weight loss your goal at first. That's not realistic, right? Because if you're making weight loss your goal at first, you're gonna be motivated to step on the scale every day, every week, twice a week. Look, I was talking to my friend, my best friend, one of my best friends, and I'm on your right, good morning. Talking to one of my best friends, and excuse me, 
Good morning. Oh. I was talking to one of my best friends, and I was helping my uh, best friend understand, not helping her understand, but uh, talking to her about, let me find a point, because I kind of got distracted a little bit. Working on habits. Okay, good. Yeah, there we go. So I was talking to my best friend, uh, and we were talking about habits, right? And when we were talking about habits, I'm trying to find a point. It was such a great point. I fucking lost it. <sighs> Let's keep walking. I'll find it. Needs, education, experiences, habits, and motivations. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. So I was talking to her about habits and stepping on the scale. And I said, you just hired somebody at work. You know, analogies are important. You just hired somebody at work. Which type of evaluation does it make sense to do when we're looking for realistic assessments of whatever this thing is that you're looking for out of your employee whom you work with? Work with, work for, whatever, right? Should we do daily evaluations where you're bringing them in and talking to them, you know, making it official documenting? Should it be weekly? Should it be bi-weekly? Should it be monthly? Should it be bi-monthly? Or should it be quarterly? Every 90 days. And she was like, quarterly. Yes, because we want to give a person 90 days to see and allow them room for whatever lessons, successes, failures, redirects, self-driven redirects and whatnot, right? We want to give them, we want to give them room to grow. And so if you're constantly checking yourself every 90 days, I mean every day, every week, bi-weekly, Right? If you're check, oh my God, you're gonna drive yourself crazy, you know? Because, good morning. In, some people speak, some people don't, but I like to be that agent of change to speak, because they automatically don't expect me to speak. Or is that true? I don't know, it's up in the comments. Um, you look at it, you're gonna drive yourself crazy, because in your weight loss journey, that weight is gonna fluctuate. Oh my God, and you developing the process that you need to be able to lose the weight that you're trying to lose, my God, that thing is gonna ebb and flow. You're gonna gain one pound, lose two, lose three, gain five, lose seven, gain 11. Of course, some of these numbers are exaggerated, but you get what I'm saying. It's gonna ebb and flow. So I encourage you in your journey to consider this. Weigh yourself when you first start. <clears throat> Weigh yourself when you first start and put that dog on scale away. Don't touch that scale. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't even touch it. Don't touch it. Now this intersection, we're not crossing like that. We're gonna wait for it to turn. Too big of an intersection, too risk to take. Right, too high of a risk to take. We're gonna end up walking by one of President Obama's houses. Regardless of your politics, the house is the house, it's what it is. All right, let's go. Leave it alone, put that scale away. Leave it alone. Put that scale away. Don't look at it until 90 days. Now, hopefully during this 90 days, you're making a conscious effort, a conscious effort during this 90 days. During this 90 days, hopefully you're making a conscious effort to come back to the track, come back to the pavement come back to working out here we go halfway point i'm doing four miles 
but we're at two, right? That's where we're at. Look at our fat burning heart rate, 131. We're doing good. So I'm going to keep on going. And if you choose to drop off at the two mile part, you're more than welcome to come back and watch this or walk with me. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. I'm going to keep on going with the video. So, shouts out to Ken Wood, Ken Wood, Ken Wood. Um, here we go. You, uh, hopefully you're making a conscious choice. You know, your motto should be, after you're done with your workout, your motto should be, or well, the question you should ask yourself, you coming back tomorrow? You coming back tomorrow? Are you coming back tomorrow? That's what you should ask yourself. That's got to be the constant question that you ask yourself. The big question. Am I coming back tomorrow? See, once you start boots on the ground, oh, that's cool. You feel good. You're energized. You're still going. You're still going. Right? Yes, we're still going. But are you coming back tomorrow? Are you coming back tomorrow? Right? Me? The answer is yes. I gotta come back tomorrow. Why? Because I gotta do it every day. I gotta do it every day. So what's gonna be your motivation? Right? What's gonna be your motivation? Right? Your motivation. I'd like to encourage you to use the same motivation you would use for whatever that thing or those things are in your life that if that thing or those things called upon you to come to it, spend time with it, whatever, use that motivation and apply it to this. Use that motivation and apply it to this. Use that motivation and apply it to this. Why do I say that? Use that motivation and apply it to this. Why do I say that? Because we all have something or some things that no matter what, oh, we going to get it. We going to get it. I'll leave that fill in the blank for you. Oh, if it calls you coming, whatever it is, take that motivation and apply it to this, right? What is motivation? What's the definition of motivation? The biological, emotional, social, and cognitive or thought forces that activate behavior. In other words, good morning. Good morning. The thoughts that activate choice and behavior, the feelings that activate choice and behavior, and the needs that activate choices and behavior, and even the social influences that cultivate and activate choice and behavior. What's your motivation? What's your motivation for getting out here on this pavement and walking your way to health? What's your motivation in looking at that road ahead and saying, yes, the road is long. And you gotta be careful of the words that you say too, because some people will sit here and say, the road is not easy. Stop putting that stuff in your mind. Stop putting that stuff in your mind. The body cannot go where the brain has not been. The body cannot go where the brain has not been. The body cannot go where the brain has not been. And so if you say out of your mouth, the road is not easy, then guess what the body takes its cue from? Henry Ford said it, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So you just put it in your mind, the road is not easy. Why would you introduce, look, walking is easy, baby. Is it long? Yes. Do you have to have the perseverance <coughs> for that? Yes. Do you see the road ahead? Yes. So let's talk and introduce facts that don't cause you to shame yourself. It's not easy, shut up. How about the road is long? That's true. 
No feeling in that. It is what it is. It's long. Yes, that's true. We can see that it's long. The journey is long. Yes, that too is true. Yes. But is walking easy? Yes. Are you serious? Yes. Walking is very easy. You've been doing it every day. And you don't sit there and say to yourself, oh man, this walking is hard. Now, tell me you got a physical ailment. Tell me you're on crutches. Tell me you've got a knee replacement and things like that. Okay. Yes, for you, it's going to be hard. Right now, that is true because you've had other things that can interrupt that process and it's painful. Yes, that's true too. But for the rest of y'all, come on, stop adopting. It may not be easy. The road hurts. Stop that. Introduce positive words and things into your mind to motivate yourself. Let's drive yourself. This walking is long, yes, but it is easy. Because if the doctor diagnoses you, you know, with a, a, a ailment that you ended up getting from something you could have, in fact, taken steps to prevent, guess what? That doctor saying that is easy. They may sit there and tell you, oh, it's not easy. Good morning. Not on me, no, thank you. The road is hard. Yeah, the pavement is hard, but this work is easy. Too easy. Come on, let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. When you walking or running or driving fast to try to go get something, that thing that if it called you and you were trying to go to get to it, the road is long, but guess what you're not saying? Who? that's a long way. You're going to get it. Why? Because you want it. Oh man, this costs too much. You don't consider it an expenditure. Why? You want it. Oh man, you asking too much. You don't even say that because you want it. You want it. There's President Obama's house over there. All the... Secret Service barriers that are still up. Yeah, here's his house. I don't even know if it still has Secret Service protection, but I ain't trying to go find out. The road is long, yes. But this walk is easy. Oh, this walk is easy. Come on. Thoughts become things. Don't put that in your mind. Don't speak that out your mouth, right? Don't speak that out your mouth. Let's go. Let's go, baby, let's go. Come on, you can do it. Come on, use your inner voice. Drive yourself. This walking is easy. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you go on ahead and start out doing four miles. See, I can do this. And maybe you can too, I don't know. But I'm just saying, if you're starting off, make your goals realistic. Make your goals realistic, right? Start off with half a mile, quarter mile, three quarters of a mile, one mile, mile and a quarter, mile and a half, mile and three quarters, two miles. Make your goals realistic. See, some of you all, you want your change to be right now. <laughs> Don't mind me. Right now. You want that change to be right now. And you want to feel like you've done something in your workout. Uh, no. No. Right. When you're talking about developing a habit, it's not going to feel at first like you're doing something. Because you may need to start small. You may need to start small. I am reminded of the story of the tortoise and the hare. Yeah, you want to be like the tortoise. You want to get it fast. But I'd rather be, that's the tortoise, I'm sorry, the hare. You may want to be like the hare and trying to get it fast because fast feels right. But after you push so fast to try to get it, why did I gain it back? Well, because you didn't work on your habits. And when you're trying to build a habit of something, you gotta start slow. 
See, let's be, let, let's think about some mindfulness things, right? Think about something that you do that's a habit. You started doing it, not knowing what it was, and you'll continue saying it forever just because. This is the song that doesn't end. It goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was, and they'll continue singing it forever just because. That's how habits are formed. This is the journey that doesn't have to end. The road looks long and long, my friend. Yes, you've started walking it, not knowing what it was, but you'll continue walking it forever just because. It starts out small. It starts out small. It starts out small, right? Start with a quarter of a mile. Do that for about a week. Then start out with, then continue with a half a mile. Then do that for another week. Then start out with three quarters of a mile. Then continue to do that for the third week. Then get up to a mile and continue doing that for that last week in that month. There you go. Then we can go on ahead and do a mile and a quarter. There you go. Then you can do a mile and a half. There you go. Then you can do a mile and three quarters. There you go. And now you're up to two miles. Guess how many days that is? 60. And as you're hearing me say it, you didn't even think about, damn, that's 60 days. That's right. Then we can go on ahead and stay at that two miles. Stay at that two miles. Stay at that two miles for the third week. Stay at that two miles for the fourth week. And now you're at 90 days. How do you feel? How does it feel? Let's go. Then if you want to challenge yourself, because the one thing I love about the Navy SEALs, they put your body through different kinds of torture tests so you can push yourself past the limitations of what you think your body can do. So let's go on ahead and do two and a quarter. Do that for a week. And let's do two and a half. Do that for the next week. Then two and three quarters. Do that for the third week. And then you at three miles for the four. How many months is that now? We have four months, aren't we? Come on now. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. And I am here to encourage you. Let's go. Let's go. You could do it. Who said you had to run? Who told you that? Look at all this sweat. Who said you had to run? Look at my heart rate. 136. Come on. Who said you had to run? Who told you that? Who told you that? <laughs> In the movie Coming to America, King Joffrey, Joe Fur. That's one of his lines. <sighs> if you remember the movie, you remember when he said that. Who told you that? All right, we're here at the intersection. I love these shoes. My feet feel good. See, that's another thing, too. It's about finding the shoe wear. Sometimes your knees, the knee wear, the things that can assist you on your journey. Clear left, clear right. I told you how I'm about lights. We going. Right, sometimes it's about finding the equipment that assists you in your journey. Come on. You can do it. You can do it, baby. You can do it. Oh, you can do it. And I'm gonna tell you something too. No shame, no judgment. But every time I look at someone who had the body that I want, I get motivated. Every time I look at somebody who had the body I used to have and I don't want anymore without shaming or judging them, I get motivated. I get motivated. Come on now, split pace, where we at? Come on, three miles, 14, 15, let's go, come on. I hope you are motivated. Come on, I hope you motivated. If you stuck around this far, come on. I hope you are motivated. Let's go, let's go. Talking about, look at that road. That road is long, of course it's long. Look at that, I had to zoom in so you can get perspective. Of course it's long, but don't you dare sit there and tell yourself, the road ain't easy. Boy, if you was going to get that, you dig? <laughs> you know what I'm talking, you ain't complaining about that road. Cause you gonna get to the yams. 
sweet yams show me the way i'm just saying right if you're going to work you ain't complaining about this walk if you're going to get to that money you're not complaining about this walk for those of you who suffered from addiction when you go into that thing you were addicted to, you are not complaining about this walk. Why? Because what's on the end is of high value to you. See, people look at what is good and what is bad and try to sit here and project what may be good or bad to them onto you. But they don't understand the Greek words of that which is good or that which is bad is rather subjective. If you look at ethics and philosophy, that which is good for one may not be good for the other. That which is bad for one may not be bad for the other. Now what you find is valuable is on the other end of that long journey. So you're not talking about the, the road is hard. It's not easy. It's light work to you. Oh, you out here kidding. It's light work, baby. Why is it light work? Because what's on the end of that, you find to be valuable. So you willing to endure that walk. So let's go. Good morning. Good morning. Because what's on the end of that walk is what's valuable. What's on the end of this walk? Physical fitness. What's on the end of this walk? Having the oxygen that you've taken in to have your muscles and your brain be oxygenated. The experiences of what you've experienced along this route to motivate you in your journey. Seeing other people working out and taking that in and being motivated to do it. Yes, you see them running, but that's not your race. Yes, you see them running, but that's not your race. Yes, you see them running, but that's not your race. Their body is their body. Their train is their train. Their track is their track. Those of you all who know me, you know I'm a children's book author. And I wrote the book, Stay On Track. You can look it up on Amazon. Inbox me, I can help you get it. Right, stay on track. Right, their journey is not yours. Their destination may or may not be the same like yours. But you got your own train that you're operating. You got your own track that you're walking on. You have to stay focused. You have to stay on track. Don't you tell yourself this road is hard, or not hard, but this road is painful. It's not easy. Cast off those shame shovels and shame statements you may have heard in an echo chamber from somebody else who feels shame. What is the definition of shame? Noun. A painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. They may feel shame and sometimes when you're insecure and uneducated, we take in sayings and sounds and things that sound like they make sense when they could be clearly misguided. You cast that off. You say objective things. Yes, the road is long. Yes, it is a journey but this is easy. I can do it. I've got the patience for the process. I'm not gonna lose weight right now, but I'm doing this to develop a habit. I'm doing this to stay motivated. I'm doing this for me. I'm not doing this for anybody else. Let's go. I gotta do this for me so I can be who I need to be for me before I can be who I need to be for anybody else. Let's go, let's go. You not doing this to get a man. You not doing this to get a woman. You not doing this for anybody else but for your health. Cause when that doctor diagnosed you with some stuff that you got that you could have prevented, he not diagnosing that man. He not diagnosing that woman. He not diagnosing those children. Good morning. Good morning. He's diagnosing you. He's not diagnosing the people that you're doing it for. So since he's not diagnosing those people, you gotta do it for you. Let's go. Come on, you could do it. This road is long. The journey is long. The cultivation of patience can be long. The process can be long. 
but it's about what you're doing right now on this pavement. It's about what these feet are doing, that you're taking it one step at a time and you're wearing the right shoe wear. <laughs> Shouts out to Hoka. You're wearing the right shoe wear. Why? Because if you got flat feet, you need to have something that's gonna help your feet be comfortable as you're traveling this road, as you're not doing it for the person on the left, on the right, the person behind you, you're doing it for you. You're walking that long journey, that hard pavement. You're doing it for you. You're doing it for you. Let's go. Don't you dare say this walk ain't easy. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because if you were trying to get to something at the end of that rainbow, that pot of gold, oh, traveling that rainbow is easy. If you're trying to get to whatever else you're trying to get to, be it career goals, education goals, romance goals, whatever type of goal you're trying to get to, all behavior is two things, goal-oriented and communication towards that goal. Let your behavior, let your movements, let the words that come out of your mouth be the communication of the goals that you want. And that's physical fitness, having a better blood pressure, having a better A1C, having a better cholesterol rate, having a better lifestyle, having a better mindset to be able to handle the necessary stresses and having the competence, confidence, knowledge, skill, and resilience to cast off unnecessary stress. You can do it. Let's go. I believe in you. It's not about them. It's about you. And I'm going to use my platform to encourage you, to motivate you. You can do it. Come on. Let's go. You can do it. You can do it. Come on, you can do it. Okay, we got the members of SEIU out here on the picket line. Let's go. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you ma'am. Thank you for your support. Thank you sir. We appreciate you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go baby, let's go. Let's go. Come on. We are by the University of Chicago Trauma Center. Let's go, let's go. Did y'all know the University of Chicago Trauma Center is in a garage? It's in the south 